Jane, Mr. McManus wants to see you in his office right away. Okay, Jimmy. There's Johnny. Don't you remember? There was a war hardly two years ago, to be exact. Yeah? Well, the Sentinel does remember and always will. Anytime you need a reminder of what the world's been through, read the Daily Sentinel. For three cents. Cash. Smug, complacent little worm. Asking me to tone down on our stories on vets. Yeah? Well, I've got more stories up my sleeve. That's where you come in, Jane. What's it this time, then? Sit down, sit down. Now, Jane, we're going to do a follow-up on those welcome home stories we ran. Remember all that fuss? Everybody welcoming home the boys from overseas? Max, your shirt's sticky now. So what? It's been that way for years. Never stopped the pressures once. Try suspenders. There goes that mother complex of yours. <clears throat> Jane, I pity the kids you'll have. They'll be scrubbed up like little Lord Fauntleroy, smelling of silk. Yeah, let's get on with this story. Find out what the boys are doing now that they're back in civilian life. Play up their families. The wives and children of ex soldiers. Children? Yes, and find out if they're happy and healthy and. Uh... What's the matter, Jane? It's no use, Mac. I... I'm pretty touchy about things, I guess. Like you are about your shirt. Now, take it easy, Jane. If I said anything to. Mac, I can't do this, do I? But, Jane, you're a reporter. Life goes on, you know. Even though you and Frank did split up. Now get someone else to do this. I can't think of ex soldiers, homes, children, things like that. Sit down. Some people take me for a hard boiled city editor. Well, I'm not. I'm a softie. Especially where you and Frank are concerned. Please, Mac. Jane, all this is not good for you. I've known flare-ups and marriages, but I can't make yours up. You know Frank left the paper to avoid any embarrassment to you. He needn't have left on my account. But he did. Good reporter, too. Yes, he is. Mac, if you want, I'll quit, too. I'm tired of newspaper work anyhow. Bitter, aren't you? I have reason to be. Sure. Everyone thinks his is the greatest tragedy on earth. I'm not concerned about others. Of course not. That's the way it usually is. But it's good to stop and think about others. It helps you evaluate your own feelings. Like Frank cared about mine. I'm sure that's not so, Jane. Well, I tell you it is so. If he had cared, if he had stopped to think of others, nothing would have happened. You talked about family. That meant something to me. Now, how can I write about it when... What did you do? Go on. Talk, Jane. It'll do you good. Frank and I believed in the same thing. We had plans. You remember, Mac? 
I most certainly do. That Christmas, he came home on furlough. Two years ago, wasn't it? That's right. Why, from the looks of both of you, I knew a certain announcement was ready to go to press. What a wonderful Christmas. Frank was coming to our house for dinner. He hadn't had a home-cooked meal in ages. In fact, he'd almost forgotten what a real home was like. I baked a mince pie. I never baked a pie before. I suppose I wanted to make an impression. Oh, lovely. Dad came sniffing around. Thanksgiving and Christmas were his favorite sniffing days. I certainly feel sorry for poor Frank. See what he's got to look forward to? Oh, far better than ulcers, Mr. Webb. It is indeed, Mrs. Webb. And if the expansion of my waistline is any uh, yardstick, <laughs> my love for you is a pretty expensive proposition. Expensive, is it? I didn't say expensive. I said expansive. <laughs> God. <laughs> you got yourself right out of here, Timothy. And you too, Mr. Webb. That was my family. Pa, Tim, and Ma. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Almighty Father, we thank thee for these thy many blessings. We thank thee that we meet together this Christmas day with our future son. Grant that we may continue in hell, that the world may find us. With Frank at the table, it became the best family in the whole world. That we may remain together always. Grandma used to say how real family life had stopped with her generation. I wondered what the Frank Taylors would have been like then. Christmas, 1900. Oh, boy. Yes, we had a lovely family. Just large enough to take up every inch of Gee. the table. And Frank was such a wonderful father. And so generous. Of course, the turkey had only two drumsticks. But Frank managed to have a drumstick for every child. Frank could do anything. Wonderful mother. There were actually ten drumsticks. What? Oh. <laughs> She's just in love. Oh, Timothy Webb. <laughs> Children should be seen and not heard. <laughs> most in the world were there in that room. Tim was bored with Beethoven. He wanted jive music. But somehow this evening was meant for the best music ever written. Christmas. Bad news. Bad news and more bad news. That's what keeps reporters alive. After all, reporters must be sad. I'll go with you that far, but personally, I'd be satisfied to just read the sports page. Say, Pa, did you read about that nice, juicy murder? 
It was all about a pretty redhead. Never mind, Timothy. My goodness, it wasn't long ago that you only looked at the counter. Oh, Ma, I know the facts of life. Timothy. Mrs. Webb, getting the lowdown on life can't hurt people. It's not intelligent people. It just makes them smarter. Not at Tim's age. And I'm ashamed of you, Frank, encouraging such things in Tim. Oh, well, I didn't... And besides, it's high time you called me Ma. Hello, Ma. <laughs> <laughs> on her, Jane. She's going to have the baby. She's ready. Oh, God. I've got to get her to the hospital right away. Couldn't I please borrow your father's car? Why, of course not. Hey, he's in no condition to drive. I'd better do it. I'll go along, too. I'll get the car keys from Dad. Take it easy, Harvey. Take it easy. while you're waiting. Frank, what'll I say when the baby comes? What does the father say? Say hello. Bobby, <laughs> why don't you come along with us and take a look at the nursery? Sure, that's a good idea. Sort of gets you into the mood. No, thanks. I think I'll just sweat it out right here. Frank, look at them. They're so tiny. Hey, there's the butcher. And there's the baker and the candlestick maker. And the doctor. And the lawyer. And back there is the Indian chief. <laughs> well, he's red enough to be an Indian. <laughs> oh, with a little heart. No soul. They're too young to have souls. I tell her they do too have souls. Okay, baby. You say so. Say, they really get you, don't they? Uh, Me too, kid. You know something? It's a miracle. Yeah, a miracle. Having a baby, I mean. Lots of people just take them for granted. But all the things that are you may someday go into a baby. Your eyes. Hair. Your mouth. The way you talk. The way you walk. even if something's wrong with you. Sometimes a weakness or, or a disease. Don't say that. It's funny I should think about it. 
you don't usually think about it. But maybe people should think more about such things. Because having a baby is some responsibility. It isn't like manufacturing shoes or hairpins or washing machines. You're manufacturing life. If your body's diseased, well, you might turn out a bad product. A product you can't just dump into an ash can because it's no good. But something you dump on society for years and years, maybe. Hey, I'm doing a lot of thinking. I like your thinking, Frank. Well, I guess we're pretty lucky. Because we come under the heading of healthy and normal. And that means our children will be the same. At least I'll get off to a good start. Frank, I'm Congratulations. Party. Yeah, but I haven't told you anything yet. Yeah, it's we a, know. It's a boy. Seven and a half pounds. Mother's doing swell. The nurse told us. Hey, who has this baby anyway? <laughs> <laughs> the other 10% of me. During those days, it seemed that every serviceman was either getting engaged or married. Every day, new batches of photographs and announcements. War seemed to make people hungry for affection. Sometimes I regretted that Frank and I had decided against a war marriage. Here you are, Jane. Oh, thanks, John. At any rate, I had Frank's letters. Three sometimes four a week. And each one told me that the future Mrs. Frank Taylor was a very lucky girl. I'll trade the Eiffel Tower for the Brooklyn Bridge. I'll trade the Rhine River for the good old Mississippi. Baby, I'll trade all the beautiful mademoiselles and fraulines for just one look at that nose of yours. Six months, a year, a year and a half. My brother Tim got into the army. But Private Timothy Webb. He never saw action because soon afterward the war ended. Just about then I was made feature editor. And I started to specialize in stories on the returning soldier. See you after lunch, Betty. Uh, beg your pardon, miss. I'd like to advertise for a gasoline station. I'm, uh... Aiming to go into business. You want the advertising department on your left. Uh, miss, you know I'm uh, new in town and now I was... How interesting. Uh, miss, you know when I first stepped off the boat I didn't know exactly where I was going to settle down. So I, I just closed my eyes and stuck a pin in the map of the United States and... Well, what place do you think got pinned? The office of the Daily Sentinel. That's right. Now wait a minute, if you... Well, I mean this town. Picture my boy, I said. This is going to be your adopted town. All you need is that uh, little gasoline station and... That sweet little gal you've been dreaming about, and everything's gonna be okay. The advertising department, nonetheless. Uh, what's your name? Jane Webb. Now look. Never mind. Alice, may I have my coffee now? Right away. Mm -hmm. Pick out this table. Well, that little old pin was mighty smart. Always stuck around the best place. Victor just wouldn't be shaken off. Even after I told him about Frank, he kept insisting I represented his dream girl. Well, that's a fact, Jane. I always knew what I wanted. A gal like you. A home. I never had a home. Where do you come from? Texas. Well, that's just where I was born. Why, I... I've been all over the West, Midwest, knocking about, no education. But the Army changed all of that for me. How come? Well, you see, 
A man has to have a reason for being alive. The army gave me that reason. I learned a trade. Automobile mechanics. The only way you can learn anything about a car is get personal. You know, take things apart. Man, I sure got personal. <laughs> you seem to have quite a talent for that. Me? Oh, not the way you mean. <laughs> oh, go on. What about mechanics? Oh, differentials, crankshafts, stuff like that. I studied. Read a lot, too. Read about more things than just mechanics. Mark Twain, Emerson, Thomas Paine, Dickens, even poetry. You know, my mind began to think clear. I kept out of trouble, too. I don't think trouble could stand a chance with you. Oh, lady, you just don't know. That little old worm temptation can sure get mighty cantankerous. <laughs> yeah, I like the way you laugh, Jane. Tell me, what would you have done if you hadn't gotten into the army? Well, lay me down on a nice warm prairie and look up at the stars. Now you're not just looking, you're reaching for the stars. Uh-huh. Some people didn't need the army for that, but I sure did. Oh, I had my gripes, plenty. My many's the time I wanted to bang my fist right through a barracks wall, but I really got no kick coming. Well, I'm taking away more than I brought in. Taking away more? Victor, I've got a wonderful idea. You've got to help me. Oh, well, sure, anything you say. What's the angle? Well, a series of featured articles on what the post-war army offers a soldier. By an ex-soldier, who knows? Meaning me? Meaning you. I get a date. Remember this, Frank. Maybe you're not so sure about him, though. Maybe he's... No, going... maybe. Now, how about the story? Okay. Well, start talking, mister. You're being interviewed for the Daily Sentinel. That's how the series of articles on Army life got started. What information about the Army Victor couldn't give me himself? He got from outside the horses. Here's that page, Pooh. Take this up to the composing room. Okay. Johnny, any mail for me today? No, ma'am. Okay. That page of pictures on Army activities was mostly Victor's idea. How the Army helped build up health with sports. How it taught trades. Got boys interested in professions. Showed them how to occupy their spare time with all sorts of hobbies. Overseas service with tours of places like Switzerland and Korea. Victor had experienced most of these things himself. Victor. Everything was Victor. And Frank. Why didn't he write? Hear from Frank, Jane? What? Oh, no. I'll bet one of those little Parisian gals got him. <laughs> you better watch him, Jane. Some little Parisian gal. What did that Frank had written? I'll trade all the mademoiselles for just one look at that little nose of yours. Hey, Jane. Jane, I got it. That's what, Vic? It's the gasoline station on Guilford Road, just off the main highway. Oh, it's a beaut. Two pumps and a lubratorium. Oh, that's wonderful, Victor. You see, advertising in the Daily Sentinel does get results. No, it was you, Jane. You brought me luck. Would you care to give a testimonial to our advertising department? I want to marry you, Jane. Well, right next to the gasoline station, there's plenty of room to build a house. Victor. Please. Still frank. Well, he's forgotten about you. He hasn't played square with you. Why do you say that? Well, you said yourself that he stopped writing. He's been ill. He didn't want to worry me. Well, he's worrying you a lot more by not writing. I don't need your explanation. Besides, it's none of your business. Sure. Well, I guess that little old pin I used on that map just... 
Didn't know what it was doing. Victor, I'm, I'm sorry. You promised you'd help me with that last article. Yeah. Okay, Jane. Let's just forget what I said. Uh-uh. I won't forget it, Victor. I'm very grateful. Any girl would be. Well, anyhow, I... Well, come on, let's start putting down what I'm going to tell you. This is about my chaplain. First one I ever met. I figure you can't write about the army unless you put in a chaplain. Because in the army, there's a chaplain for every spot you hit. All chaplains talk about morals and clean living, but this one called it like a baseball umpire. He said, men... I get this down. Men... Just because you're in the army doesn't mean that you leave family behind. Because you've got family inside of you, whether you like it or not. God put it there. I jotted the rest down on a piece of paper. Made mighty fine reading sometimes. Especially when you were lonely. The normal state for most men is the married state. The happiness, the contentment, the love that is waiting for you is worth the sacrifice and faith you exercise now. I forgot. Uh, you got a sister like yourself? Uh-uh. Maybe a cousin. See, I could wait for you, Jane. No, Victor. It'll always be Frank. He'll come back soon, and... He'll come back. Well, anyway... You keep this. I know it by heart. we were married, happiness was just another way of saying Mr. and Mrs. Frank Taylor. All that mattered then was our apartment and us. Come on, little curtain rod. Nice little curtain rod. Doggone you, get him. We'd better get Jane to a hospital. Hospital? For observation. It may require surgery. I'll phone for an ambulance. Time for sleep. I can't sleep. I want to go home. There's nothing wrong with me. In that case, you should sleep very soundly. Good night. Observation. It could mean so many things. Things I couldn't understand. I was frightened. After a while of observation and treatment, the doctor said I could go home. But he wanted to talk to both Frank and me before we left the hospital. Come right in. Sit down, Jane. Frank. 
Rest did you a lot of good, Jane. <laughs> I feel all right, except... You want to know what the score is? Well, Frank, the score heads up. But it's sort of difficult to get it down in black and white. If you remember, Jane's trouble started around the region of the appendix. But it's turned out to be a great deal more than appendicitis. Jane's childbearing organs have been damaged. Childbearing organs? In what way, Doctor? Well, you see, there are certain tubes in a woman's body. Tubes that connect the womb and over it, like passageways. And through them pass the male and female cells. Now, in order to produce a new life, these cells must meet and unite. But the cells can't meet if these passageways are blocked by infection. Infection? Yes, Frank. That's what has happened to Jane. You mean I can't have any children? That's hard to say right now. Doctor, this infection, how did it happen? It was caused by a venereal disease. Gonorrhea. Gonorrhea? But it couldn't be. It couldn't be. Frank. Jane, honey, I... to say it. It just happened, that's all. Given my life rather than have it happen. I was lonely and I had a few drinks and... Don't say any more. Now, now, this isn't going to do either of you any good. There's hope, you know. You're letting. That's why you didn't write. Yeah, that's it. I don't understand. They told me I was okay. They gave me penicillin. Son, there's no surefire cure. Penicillin doesn't always work. You didn't even tell me. I couldn't. I just couldn't. How did I get out of the army if I still had it? Answer me that. Very simple, Frank. Some cases like yours may not show symptoms, but may still carry the disease. Now, if it had been syphilis, it would have shown up in your premarital blood test. Jane might have been spared. But your case is gonorrhea. There is no blood test for gonorrhea. You'll need treatment, Frank. Jane. 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 Please, Frank. We have nothing more to say. Jane, I... That was the last time I saw Frank. Thank you, Doctor. I... I'm a little stumped. Don't know what to say. Well, I'm glad I told you. I had to tell someone. Well, it's... Uh, it's all past now. You're young, Jane. Your whole life's ahead of you. Not from where I'm standing, Max. Nonsense. You mustn't talk that way. It's... It's true, being deprived of ever having any children, it's... Well, it was a tough deal. But, my dear, you must get well. All well. I mean in your heart. There must be forgiving and forgetting. Max, don't give me one of your editorials, please. I don't feel anything, don't you understand? I've no heart left. That's why I can't do your story. I couldn't put the words together, words that would make sense. Thanks for listening.
you'd like to know how she feels, Frank. Yeah, thanks. She's got a good memory, all right. She remembered everything. All our hopes and plans. Even if we do get together again, what's in it for us? Nightmares? I'm the guy that knew all the answers. You know something? I'm the world's prize heel. Well, I'll be seeing you. Where are you going? What are your plans? Plans? Are you kidding? All right, Frank. You back with us again? No, Bruce. Oh. Uh, say, Mac, here's that editorial on venereal disease. You'll see me in a few minutes, will you? Sure. Wait a second, Bruce. Mind if I take a look at that story? Sure. Why not? Just leave it here. Okay. According to the State Board of Health, figures on venereal disease for the past three months show an increase of 32 and 5 tenths percent. This increase is 6 and 2 tenths statistics. Who'll read them? What's the matter with statistics? Over a million new cases of VD annually throughout the nation, it says here. So I finish reading that and turn to Dick Tracy with a picture of some blonde wanted by the police for poisoning her husband. Figures talk, Frank. Sure, in the stock market. Look, if it's the score you want to give them, tell them that it all adds up to zero. Or better yet, tell your public if they're looking for that shot in the arm against VD, they're not going to get it. Ask me. I know. All right. I'm asking. It's everybody's responsibility. Like it was mine. It's a one-man job. It's a lifetime job. My idea of a story would Hold be... Hold it. Here, Frank. Dictate it into this machine. We'll make it an editorial. Sunday editorial. Caption. Miracle of living. This is the story of two diseases, syphilis and gonorrhea. Diseases that have caused women more pain and suffering than any other two infections. Diseases that have caused men to lose the most precious thing in the world, happiness kind of happiness that comes with home and family. 